So how do I edit my photos and what programs do I use? Well, I use Snapseed a lot of the time, either Snapseed or that in conjunction with Adobe Lightroom or Photoshop. What makes that possible is I use my trusty Note 8. Love it because it comes with the stylus, helps get those minute details, you know, like, like the edges and stuff like that. Snapseed and these other apps are meant for your finger to touch, but the stylus really takes it to the next level. Now you don't need a stylus, it definitely helps, but you don't need it. That being said, let's take one of my past photographs that um, that I have from a shoot that I never posted it or edited and we'll go through the process together and it's you know it's gonna be pretty straightforward it's gonna be pretty simple okay so here is our picture I feel like a good opportunity to separate myself from the background and the way I'm going to do that is going to be through desaturation and masking so this first step some of you might not have to go through this. I don't know what it is, but Snapseed does not like 1DX Mark II files. So what I first have to do is throw this into Photoshop Express if I want to edit the raw version of it. So I'm going to share it into Photoshop Express first. Um, now, if you're working with solely JPEG, you can put this straight into Snapseed and uh, you can just fast forward through this part if you want. But I'm doing this so I can just have a little more control over my ranges as far as the clarity goes along with like sharpness, the highlights, and that's pretty much it. And then I'm going to import from Photoshop into Snapseed. So um, let's go ahead and rotate this sucker first. The reason why it's upside down to begin with is because I had to mount the camera on the top of this, this uh, walkway, as you can see above my head, for me to get this angle of shot. So let's go ahead and flip this the correct way. And I'm specifically going to use this for Instagram. So along with flipping it, I know I'm gonna crop it eventually too, but um, let's just go ahead and start with these, uh, these ranges here. I'm gonna zoom in, put the focus on myself. Let's see here. Um, now I usually put my clarity up to about 80. Clarity has to do with a lot of the contrast in the picture and, and tones. So I get that to a point where it looks pretty good, makes me look, look a little bit sharper, and then I'll go even further and add sharpness. Now the more sharpness you add, the more grainy the picture is gonna get, so just be careful, be conscious, and really look at what you're doing. Uh, sometimes grain isn't a problem, so I'm just gonna leave it as this. This looks all right. Um, then I'm gonna scroll over here and turn down my highlights. Notice my arm is a little too bright. So I'm gonna bring my highlights down so I have some color back in those bright spots. And um, that's all I'm gonna do here. So from this point, like I said, I'm gonna export this or uh, technically share it and put it into Snapseed. So now we are in Snapseed. We just left Photoshop and now here we are in Snapseed. First I'm going to head to my tools, go to crop, Put this at about um, four by three sounds good. And I know I said I'm gonna put this into Instagram. Uh, just a quick note, they don't always have to be square orientation or one by one. Instead, I'm gonna do three by four. So to get four by three to be three by four, I'm going to just rotate the crop ratio. And now we are technically at three by four. And just by pulling in these corners a little bit, um, this should look pretty good. I try to keep myself in the third. I want to keep my platform. So I think this looks pretty fair. So as you can see, I'm standing in kind of the middle of this left third and I'm almost touching edge of the second third over here. So um, yeah, just, you know, just keep some decent guidelines to consider. Now we're at the step where I want to separate myself from the background and one way I like to do that is to go into Tune Image. I want to desaturate quite a bit here. Let's go down to, I'm going to say about 90. That looks pretty good. Um, actually, let's go to 80, 85, 85. We're going to go to 85. There we are. 85. Now, the whole picture is desaturated. So, one cool thing about a Snapseed is you can come in to your layers, view your edits, and find the one you just worked on and create a mask 
using a brush filter. So once I click the brush filter, I'm back in the layer where we did do the desaturation, but it doesn't show the desaturation because it's giving me the opportunity to create a mask for it. So what I'll do is I'll highlight myself and um, you know, this can be as meticulous as you want it to be. And for the most part, you want it to be pretty, pretty um, accurate as far as your edges go. And as you can see, this is where the stylus really comes in handy. One thing that is a downside to this, and maybe I just haven't figured it out yet, but um, I don't think you're able to adjust the feathering on the edges of these brushes. So what I mean by that is, do you see this fade coming off of the color? Well, there's no way to make that a harder or more of a straight edge. It's, it's always faded. So that's one reason why you have to zoom in to get to the detail because the feathering is so much uh, less. If you start to run into a little bit of um, trouble with these edges, maybe you're editing red like this and you're using the red mask, you could always invert and start erasing the red if it helps you uh, in that regard. As you can see, every now and again, I'll back out like this so I can kind of get an overview of how my work's looking. Um, you know, that just helps me a little bit when I'm working so close to the subject and I need to just get like a overview. I'll do that often so I can reflect on this edit. Okay, so once you have your mask created around the subject, um, you may notice that I actually came in here and went over certain spots that don't need the mask. Uh, sometimes it's easier for me to just do that and then revisit so I'll find the spot that I just went over and um, cut it out a little rough around it. I know this is through my elbow. I'll erase effect from there and then I'll bring the effect back up and just kind of carve out. So is my preference to use the mask over myself to color me in red. What I need to actually do is invert this so the background is masked. And now I just hit the check mark and as you see, everything but myself has been desaturated because I masked myself out. If you go in and you see some issues, like maybe some color bleeding here, you can go back into the effect, reopen the brush filter, and just go over, um, you know, find the affected area and go back over it. But I'm just gonna reinstate the edit here. Again, we're working with a feathered tool and there's no way to do a clip path like you might do in Photoshop. So one other thing I might play around with is adding a vintage layer, a very light vintage layer. So it kind of gives you this preset amount, but I'll go ahead and tone down the style strength a little bit and call it good. And you can always preview what, you, what you're doing by toggling this upper right hand little button. And you see there's a lot of vignetting going on. So that does look pretty good. I do like the vignetting, but it's a little too strong. So I'm gonna swipe up to bring that vignetting down. I like to take it all the way to zero and then work my way up from there. So the vignetting definitely helps the subject stand out. Now you do have to be careful when you do vignetting because if you look at the photo from a thumbnail perspective, you will notice this, this darker border around the picture. So that's just it guys. I hope um, this helped you. I hope you enjoyed that little process of how I edit my photos. I hope it helps you in any way. It's not that hard. See, I mean, you just you just have to know when to stop and not overdo it. That's pr pretty much the biggest thing. You don't want to over edit your stuff. Um, if I can recommend one big thing, if you find that you're kind of caught in the editing process and you don't know when to stop, try taking a break. You know, that never hurts. Take a break, whether it's a day or even a week, and revisit the project. And you will more than likely find things that you would tone down or do a little differently, some little fixes here and there. It really makes a big difference. And that suggestion goes a very long way. Uh, not only does it apply for editing photos, but it applies for video editing, uh, making music, 
even designing websites. So pretty much anything creative, you know, take a step back, refresh your eyes, pull back away, and then refamiliarize with a new outlook, maybe even a mentality switch. I hope you liked the video. Hit that like button if you did. Subscribe if you want to see more. Ring the little bell if you want to get notifications. I got the giveaway coming up. Got some more exciting news about the channel, everything. And I will see you, I will see you in the next video. Peace.